When you think Oklahoma City Thunder, you think of highlight machine Russell Westbrook. But what if we replace him with another thunderous player? And that's exactly what we did, as John Morant would be taken number four overall in the 2008 draft, heading straight to Oklahoma City, a brand new NBA team in need of an identity, which would not take long for them to get, as rookie John Morant alongside sophomore KD would take over the league, with Ja putting up ridiculous rookie numbers, winning rookie of the year over Derrick Rose. He's clearly already got his sights set on averaging a triple-double, which makes a lot of sense, considering he's having to fill the shoes of the triple-double king himself. Himself. And Ja would look to further prove himself to Oklahoma City in the first round against the two-seeded Mavericks, which between Dirk and bald-ass Jason Kidd, this was gonna be really difficult. But it's clear Ja Morant doesn't feel any pressure because OKC is taking the first? And so after stunning the Mavs in game one, Ja would go out and get humbled pretty quickly by prime Dirk Nowitzki, losing the next four games in a gentleman's sweep. It's really hard to beat prime Dirk round one. But nonetheless, this was not only a phenomenal rookie season for Ja, but the Oklahoma City future looked bright. And in the 2010 season, it would only look brighter as this young core would gain James Harden, who would be the perfect complement to this Ja Kevin Durant duo. But as a result, Ja would average seven points less this season. This could be a problem because Ja, he likes his rock. I like rocks. However, in these playoffs, James Harden would share the rock a lot more, which didn't work out in game one against Portland. But as as the series went on and James and Ja found a rhythm, things got a lot better. Taking this competitive Trailblazers series all the way to a game seven and blowing them out. The Thunder did it, Ja's advancing to round two. And so after a well-earned first ever playoff series victory for Ja, he and the Thunder looked to get revenge on the Mavericks in round two. And this year, Jason Kidd was looking as bald as ever. But this dynamic trio went out and stunned Dallas in the first two games. 2-0 two lead, they're gonna pull it up. I can feel it. But in games three, four, and five, the Thunder would be feeling Dirk Nowitzki, who ultimately became unguardable. And though the Thunder would force a game seven, the Mavs would blow him out. And so devastated by this game seven loss, Ja would be back for the Mavericks later. But for now, he's gonna be rocking a new hairstyle in this new season, averaging even more points and getting the Thunder to a three seed in the West. And this momentum would not only carry into round one of these playoffs where Ja would play his team in an alternate reality, but it would also carry into round two where this Thunder team finally got its revenge on the Dallas Mavericks, capped off with a highlight play from the man himself. Ja, at the rim. And one! Ugh. And so after touching Kendrick Perkins' stinky hand, Ja would be advancing to his first Western Conference Finals, the San Antonio Spurs. And so this young Thunder team would be put to the test against a veteran core in San Antonio, as the trio of Tony Parker, Tim Duncan, and Manu Ginobili would be too much for the Thunder to handle, losing the series 4-1 to one simply as a result of the Spurs playoff experience. Don't be discouraged, they're getting close closer and closer. And so in the 2012 season, it seemed like they would continue to get closer. Ja would have by far his best season. And in the playoffs, the Thunder would match up against a young undeveloped Warriors team and they would get swept round one. That seems like it's gonna do it. The up and coming Warriors are gonna finish this thing off with a sweep. And the pressure only seemed to build for Morant as in the off season, James Harden would be traded to the Rockets. Primarily because Ja and James didn't see eye to eye in leading the Thunder offense. So as a result, there's now a massive spotlight on Ja, who has been underperforming in comparison to Westbrook, who would have made the finals at this point in his career. And in this next season, the Ja Durant duo was okay, but not great, as they would lead the Thunder to a 47 and 35 record, finishing seventh in the West. But let me just tell you, this team started to seem like the greatest seventh seed of all time, as in the first round, they would sweep the two seed Kobe Lakers. And this round one performance was far from a fluke, as in round two, they would run it up on the Memphis Grizzlies, sweeping them as well. Jaws going to yet another Western Conference Finals. He's come a long way since then. I'm really excited to see what he does. And Demetrius Jamel Morant would not disappoint, giving this prime Clippers trio a bunch of problems, as he and KD's floor spacing and elite athletic ability would take this series all the way to a game seven, which they would let slip in the final quarter. Chris Paul, you're a fraud, dude.
happen. Either way, Ja and Kevin were finally developing a really good chemistry which would carry into the 2014 season, as these two would lead the Thunder to a three seed, but in round one, they would have a game seven scare against Memphis, but they would get it done. Followed by round two, where they would have their chance to get revenge on the Spurs, who would go up 3-1, and Tony Parker would have the last laugh. No way. No way. Oh my god, bro. Clearly at this point, Jaws kryptonite seems to be the San Antonio Spurs. But after some intense offseason work in the 2015 season, KD and Ja would run the league. As Kevin would be the one leading the charge, winning MVP. But make no mistake about it, he would not have won this award without the help of Ja Moran. And this team would only turn the intensity up come playoff time, posterizing their way through rounds one and two led by Ja Moran. Houston blows. <laughs> so after beating his former teammate James Harden on the Houston Rockets, Ja would look ahead to a team that doesn't blow, the San Antonio Spurs. This will be their third time meeting in the playoffs, but this time, the Thunder, they're the higher seed. With that being said, the Spurs' longevity would work against them this year as 48-year-old Tim Duncan would get dusted. And the Thunder clearly were more than just a young group of talent. Now, they were playing playoff superstar. John Morant's going to his first finals, meaning he would have to quickly celebrate finally dethroning the San Antonio Spurs and focus his attention on the two-seated Bulls, led by old Derrick Rose and new Jimmy Butler. So the question would be, could John Morant do what Westbrook couldn't and bring a championship to Oklahoma City? Well, let me just tell you, yes he would, sweeping the Bulls with no problem. As he and KD remained unstoppable, capping off a historic season with a championship. Ja Moran, his first championship. And so while Ja was finally putting some hardware in his trophy case, Kevin Durant would be the one winning the finals MVP, similar to the regular season. But nonetheless, Ja was happy for KD to receive this credit because he knew he was playing his part. But in the 2016 season, as the Thunder looked to go back to back, Ja wanted to take more control of this team, asserting his way to a phenomenal MVP season, averaging 30 points and getting really close to a triple-double. Ja Morant might be the face of this league. Starting with the Utah Jazz, Ja would continue to make his presence known in the league. Moving on to yet another intense Clippers series, but pulling through late in Game 7. And as for the conference finals against Houston, this series wasn't close at all, further proving that Ja does not need James Harden. But that's besides the point, as in the finals, they would be playing the other great duo in the league of Kyrie and LeBron, representing the Cleveland Cavaliers. And so before things got underway, I had one bold prediction. This is going to be a hard-fought series. And I really did think that, but as this series got started, I started to see that the Thunder have way more depth, in addition to Ja Morant being on fire. So with that being said, they would take the series 4-1. to one. It wasn't even close. And we can now officially say that both KD and Mr. Morant Rant are Oklahoma City legends. So after an emotional championship going back to back, Ja would add two more trophies to his collection, one of which being a finals MVP. And although there's so much for this Thunder franchise to continue to be excited about, things were gonna get rockier as KD was starting to become jealous. Even though Ja was more than happy to be KD's sidekick in his MVP season, Kevin was not feeling the same way. Because even though he won two championships, he didn't feel like he was getting all the credit and he opted to move out west to the Golden State Warriors in the offseason. A completely shocking move that left Ja and the Thunder organization in shock. There's feelings I couldn't ignore so you know, I made a decision to come and, uh, and play for these guys and I, and I feel great and I feel excited about this opportunity. And though he just lost his teammate and good friend to the Golden State Warriors in the 2017 season, Ja would be excited for an opportunity as well. Getting a chance to prove that he could lead a team on his own to possibly another championship. And so looking to three-peat and keep this dynasty going, Ja would go out and have a decent record, finishing as a seventh seed in the West. But his averages for the season were insane, and he clearly had something to prove to KD. Ja is this close to averaging a triple-double, but in round one against the two-seeded Rockets, it 
it seemed like Jaws' crazy season would come to an end soon, with Houston taking a 3-0 lead. But Jaws still had something to prove, and he would claw the Thunder right back into this fight, taking it to a game six, which would come down to the wire. Kicks it. Oh, Jaws! Bucket! And even though Jaws is clutch, his teammates would not be the best about giving him the ball. Oladipo's got it, even though Jaws, like, give it to Jaws, dude. Yeah, Jaws got it inside. He's working the post, like, he keeps doing it. This is crazy another fade hardens double teams kicks it to lemon pepper lou once again lemon pepper lou he's getting clamped by all depot there's no shot okay like what are we doing dude jaw's got harden on him oh he broke him for a second now he's got compelling get it get it it's steven adams fuck it fuck it jaw with the he, he's a facilitator so after jaw's clutch dime the rockets would of course call timeout but upon the inbound steven adams would forget where he was trevor reza inbounds it take bro that's too easy Montrez Harold just wide open. Like, is Steven Adams high? And so once again, the Thunder were gonna need to be bailed out by Ja himself. He's down one. He has to do something. Lemon Pepper Lou is trying to clamp. He can't. Ja Morant, layup. So now, with only seconds remaining, whether or not we'd go to a game seven would be decided by Eric Gordon. There's 10 seconds left. They're gonna go for game here. Nobody has any timeouts. Not like this, bro. Jeremy Grant's on him. Je no way. Yeah, that's a brick! So after evening this series at three apiece, Jaw felt confident he found his guys. He now believed that he didn't need Kevin Durant, so then in game seven, he would lose. But at least after the game, Jaw and Harden would hug it out, and I think James even said something in Jaw's ear. Hey man, you should really come to Houston. We'll take good care of you. Mm. So after whatever that was, in the 2018 season, Jaw and the Thunder would be acquiring Paul George and Carmelo Anthony, two players who are probably past their prime, but let me just tell you, it certainly didn't seem like that, as they would finish with the greatest record of all time. Going 74-8 and eight with Paul George even winning MVP, and though in the first round, this amazing team would struggle taking it to a game seven, they'd get it done, and after that, it was smooth sailing, as this Thunder team would make it to the finals and play the Hornets, which I have no idea how that happened, but it was over as quickly as it started. With Jaws' emotion pouring out as he would bring home a third championship to the Thunder in addition to winning his second finals MVP without Kevin Durant. And so with Ja adding more to his trophy case this season, it wouldn't be much different in the 2019 season. As even though they would lose Carmelo Anthony to the Houston Rockets, the Paul George Ja connection was just too much for the league to handle. And Ja would go out and win his second MVP and of course claim a one seed in the Western Conference. And not only would Ja and PG blow by the first two rounds, but also in the Western Conference Finals, they would get revenge on Kevin Durant, the man that snaked out the thunder. It's personal for Ja. And so facing the Sixers in the Finals, they kept things going, as Ben Simmons would shoot his signature three shots a series, and Joel Embiid would do his best, but come up short. Meaning not only that Ja and PG would go back to back, but Ja would be claiming his fourth championship for Oklahoma City. So if he wasn't already a legend, he certainly is one now. But once again, when things seemed like they were going their best, there was something wrong. You see, the media and NBA fans around the world were theorizing that Ja couldn't get any championships without getting carried by someone else. A narrative that was completely false, but Ja bought into it. So with that being said, in the 2020 season, Ja would cut ties with Paul George and take James Harden up on his weird offer. And this Harden-Ja reunion would actually go really well, as they would finish 65-17, and 17, claiming the one seed in the West. So per usual, they would ride this into the playoffs through the first two rounds, and then they would lose in game six to Paul George and the Clippers. So of course, with all that being said, Harden would do what he does best and not take any accountability and blame the organization. The situation is, is, is crazy. You know, it's something that I don't think can be fixed, so. In addition to that, Harden would eat his way into lowering his trade value, and Ja took one look at that and said, F this, I'm out of here. Meaning that in the 2021 season, he would be sent to the Washington Wizards to play with Bradley Beal and Rui Hachimura. And this trio consisting of two seasoned veterans and a really young guy was actually very good. Ja was enjoying his time with the Wizards and was taking control of their offense, winning yet another MVP. Leading the Wizards to a 63-19 and record as a one seed, which I don't think the Wizards have ever done. And so now being in the Eastern Conference, I think things actually got easier for Ja as he would beat the Pacers, Bucks, and then the Sixers in the Eastern 
Eastern Conference Finals, teeing us up for a Lakers-Wizards matchup, which would go back and forth to the end, down to a Game 7 in LA. Finals Game 7 against the Lakers. And I do want to hype this as an intense back and forth Game 7, but in the fourth quarter, Ja, Beal, and Rui got really hot, and it was clear they were going to be the NBA champions. And so as a result, it would seem that Ja doesn't need to be carried to a championship, as he would put his fifth in his trophy case. And while he was certainly happy in Washington, LeBron had a pitch for him to come to Los Angeles. He promised him fast cars, unbelievable parties, and the most beautiful Instagram models on earth. So of course, it was going to be hard for Morant to say no, and in the 2022 season, he would be a Laker. So teaming up with LeBron and AD, this team was destined for greatness, as they would of course finish 57 and 25 as a one seed, and in round one against the eight seed Denver Nuggets, they would get upset. I simulated round because I didn't think, I didn't think the Nuggets would win. The problem seemed to be that LeBron and Ja are just both ball dominant players and they couldn't play on the same court. And they tried to make it work in the 2023 season, but about halfway through, they sent Ja to the Clippers. And these two guys were more than happy to be alongside each other once again, as the chemistry was evident. Ja would even help the Clippers recover from a rough start to the season and get them to a 49 and 33 record as a four seed in the West. And the PG Ja chemistry would keep going through the playoffs all the way to the NBA Finals where they would play this young Cavaliers team. And with the Clippers having this much momentum, I figured they'd put the Cavaliers away pretty quickly. But let me just tell you, it was quite the opposite. Because even though Ja, Kawhi, and PG are really good, they're pretty much past their prime. And the young group of Cavaliers would put them away in a sweep. And while I want to be upset, Ja won five championships and a variety of other awards in his career. So the question would be, was Ja just a better fit in Westbrook's scenarios? Or maybe he's just even a better player? Or is this just a stupid video game? I don't really know, but what I do know is Ja is one of the most dominant point guards of all time. And speaking of dominant point guards, let's look at Steph and Kyrie's lengthy rivalry. Ask yourself, what would happen if these two switched their circumstances and competed head-to-head? -head? Click on the center of the screen to find out.